You may have heard my personal elevator speech, which is the fact that I have a master's degree in exercise science. I've been a personal trainer for 33 years. I run the top personal training facility in the Southeast. I come from a medical family. My father and brother both were physicians or are physicians. And I'm not a dietitian, nor do I play one on TV. But of course, you hear me give a lot of nutritional advice and I always state that we don't play outside the lines. And in fact, we have a dietitian that we consult with on a daily basis, on a regular basis, almost daily basis. Well, I thought it only fair that you get a chance to meet that dietitian. Kicking off what is going to be our monthly segment on nutrition with Tanya Green, the personal age fitness dietitian today on the personal age fitness podcast. Welcome to the personal edge fitness podcast with Garrett Williamson, health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Hey, good day. This is Garrett Williamson, president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast, introducing the first of our nutritional segments, which we're hopefully going to be able to do once a month. And I want to introduce quickly my guest. We'll get into talking more about it in a minute. But Tanya Green, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. We're going to dive head first into talking about Tanya and her background. And also, well, we're covering one of my favorite subjects today. But if you have any questions about this podcast or any others or as always, any questions dealing with dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, and we are definitely going to be dispelling some myths today in nutrition, <laughs> please contact us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. Personaledgefitness.com is, of course, our website. You can contact us that way. Personal Edge Fitness is our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter or X at Team PE, if you are so inclined. I've been excited about doing this. I'm very grateful that you agreed to do this, but and you're going to see why. Tanya, tell us a little bit about your background, please. Gosh, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I have a degree in Bachelor of Science in uh, Nutrition. I went to school at Sanford and then did graduate work at UAB. Stepped into the field, uh, worked at a gym, and have also worked in a hospital setting there's actually lots of different directions, lots of different facets uh, right. for a degree in nutrition. But I discovered quickly that um, the hospital was not really for me. Right. I liked wellness. I liked sports nutrition. I liked corporate nutrition. Sure. So that is the road that I've uh, been down. I've worked at a gym. I've worked as a corporate dietitian um, for some companies. Right. So I've done a lot of private consulting. So that's kind of the road I chose, the path I went down. Right. And on top of that, you've done a few other things. And I would say some of your biggest accomplishments that are uh, some clients that have come here. You've got three kids. I do. Yes. <laughs> Goodness, Just yes. want to remind you about that. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. I have been. I do have a husband. have been married yeah. for, gosh, 32 years yeah, now. Yeah. I, have, uh, I have three kids. I have one that just got married. He's 23. I have another one that is a junior at Troy, my right. daughter. And then um, I have a, a little guy that is uh, 15 and is going to give us a heart attack on the road, but <laughs> it's going to be fine. <laughs> All systems normal. That's so right. definitely it's going to so. be fine. I have to give something in full disclosure, too. Oh, by the way, your daughter is going to Troy and mainly putting this, putting this plug in in case she does hear this. Right. I know she's casually looking in this direction. I know probably more PT, but we are more than glad to have her dabble in these uh, in the fitness arts if she is so inclined in case you happen to be watching yes. or listening to this. But yes. we're glad to be glad she's at least considering this field. Let's put it that way. Yes. So. Yes, All right. But is. full disclosure, where do you work out? I work out here <laughs> and have so for a really long time. Okay. Now here's the test. Uh, how long have you worked out here? The reason I remember oh, wow. is because Carabath was about two Okay. And she is about to turn 21. Okay. So yeah, somewhere yeah. in the neighborhood of 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I knew it was around 20 years because I, yeah. I was putting it. I was putting it somewhere around 03 or 04, somewhere around there because of JD. Yes. That was the connection. Yes. So, yeah, that was yeah, the connection. Exactly. So uh, when JD was training with us, he knew you. And that's when you started here and been yep. training ever since. So yep. full disclosure, yes, she has been a client of uh, Personal Edge for around the neighborhood of 20 years. But how long have you and I been talking about nutrition? 
About 20 years. I was going to say about <laughs> 20 years. And well, I remember at another gym, yeah. you walked in my office one yes. day and that yes, was the first yes. time I met you. So right. that was even prior right. exactly. to me exactly. working exactly. out here. Yeah, That's true. That's so true. it's been a long time. Knowing that, not knowing that our paths would cross after yes. that, which I'm very thankful about myself. So yes. I have to say, I probably interrupt your workout at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> to discuss to discuss nutrition, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Tanya has had a hand in and been a big help in building not only our Catalyst program, but our In It to Lose It program, and now our B three program. And it's something that this is no kidding. I'm not saying that just because Tanya's here, but really probably about once a week that we that we talk about it. Mainly seeking her advice on it because, like I say all the time, I'm not a dietitian, nor do I play one on TV, and I don't try to play outside the lines. I know that you know outside of recommendations, I'm going to need to go to somebody that has the back ground the knowledge and that is Tanya but uh, but this another part of this that I appreciate and that is how much you enjoy when we talk about that I mean it's amazing it's amazing to me to see your reaction to when I get to tell you hey look let me let me tell you something I experienced with the client or whatever you know yes and that's been very beneficial yes okay yes now in order to kick this off we've already discussed what four or five different topics yes. that we want to talk about and I think more will come born out of it but I felt like we needed to start this with what I talk about all the time on the show. You've heard me talk about the fact of the live food. Our fitness is based on the live age. Our nutrition is based on the live food. And what I've said numerous times, is, as you well know, the live food, the premise of that is the fact that the ridiculous concept that there is such thing as bad food. I say there is not. I say it's uh, basically a history lesson that I've given. I've done it in a four-part series on the, the podcast, and that is talking about how we got way off track back in 1953 when a celebrity had a heart attack, which created the Food Guide Pyramid, which was built on the lipid hypothesis, which has never been proven. And I say to this day that there is no such thing as bad food. We're going about it the wrong way by criminalizing the food. And that I always say that if you speak to any reputable dietitian who's not trying to sell you something, they will tell you the same thing. Okay, we happen to have one of those individuals <laughs> right now. And now it's time for, account, uh, for counterpoint. It's time for me to give the other side an opportunity. Go ahead. Make me look like a fool if you'd like. You are my resident authority on, di- on, on, on nutrition. What say you? I say that I love that you put together a presentation like that. Mm. I love it. Thank you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because it is. I I think it's absolutely true. One of the things that I've seen in the industry over the last 30 years, it swings like a pendulum. Right. And when I was studying nutrition and when I first got into the field, carbs were good and fat was bad bad right and protein was okay you yeah. just threw some on your plate every now and then yeah yeah it was carbs carbs carb everybody was carbo loading carbo loading carbs 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 yeah and then now it has swung the other direction and it's carbs are bad protein is good right good you know it, we need to be loading it with protein and carbs are bad 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 don't eat bread don't eat this don't, don't eat that well which is it right Right. <laughs> exactly. And then I've seen fat be the enemy and I've seen fat be the hero. So in all this time, our digestive systems have not changed. Amazingly enough. Right. They have not become woke and they have not swung with the, with no. the, the side. No, yeah. they have not. Yeah, imagine not. that. Our bodies have not changed, but our thoughts about food have. Right. And so I think that's a big thing to take into consideration is are we eating for what's popular or are we eating for what's what's really healthy and what's doable? Right. What our body actually needs. Yeah. So what it requires. I've never thought about it that way, what you said about the fact that because the nutritional swings, Lord, I can't count how many nutritional yeah. swings I've had. Just oh, in yeah. my, I mean, I've been, been in practice for 33 years, which is not really that long. I mean, it is a long time, but Lord, I mean, the... the, the, the yeah. Well, like I say... It's yeah. amazing what e- comes out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's completely gone from this is good, this is bad. And it's done this. Right. No, 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 no. That's bad. This is good. Well, I tell you, and the, the point that I was making is the, the fact that I've never heard it said that way. Yeah, but a digestive system, it's, it's, you know, it was a 
pretty good machine that they built, you yeah. know, and created a long time ago and hasn't right. changed. That's right. It hasn't changed I- at all. I've never heard it put that way. When you were talking about the swings back and forth and this is good, that's bad or whatever, how many times do we, you know, oh, we found it. This is it. This is new. This is the greatest thing or whatever, you know. Right. That's where we've gotten completely off track. Yes. Uh, amazingly enough. You brought up the carbohydrates, protein, fat. What I want to center on for a second is fat. This hit me the other day, and this is why I'm bringing this up to you. I don't know if I've ever said to you, you know, the word F-A-T, all your life, all my life, has been bad. It's almost like, I don't want to be careful about mentioning certain words, but saying N-A-Z-I is not good. You know, that's that's a bad, bad word. F-A-T has always been bad. And I, I started thinking about it in Georgia about 15, 20 years ago. There were some license tags that came out, and the first three initials were F-A-T. Mm. And people were going back to the DMV and getting the <laughs> tags changed out. And it made, it made the Atlanta Constitutional Journal. I mean, it was a big deal. That's how bad that word is. And I realized that, awesome. that it was criminalized. It was criminalized at the same time. Yeah. I mean, think about that. When, you know, high saturated fats. It was criminalized with the lipid hypothesis. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know, I've done a few podcasts on this. But the lipid hypothesis is the fact that first hypothesized by Angel Keys back at a World Health Organization uh, conference in, uh, in 19, uh, right around 1956, 55, 56. And it states that high saturated fat diets cause high cholesterol. And high cholesterol, number two, causes heart disease. And that has actually never been proven. Now, I'm not, I'm not speaking out of turn. I'm not just, this is not my opinion. This is true. This has actually never been proven. Well, um, that's when I think they criminalized FAT. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's amazing Absolutely. how it's just, just changed the way we thought about that. All right. I did a staff presentation of the live food and I had Tanya actually sit in with me on that. But something you talked about, which really blew my mind about your education and how some of this had made it in. Can you tell us a little bit about that, about when you were getting your degree, what you were hearing as far as like the live food? At that time, the carbs were good. Right. So people were eating plates of spaghetti and, you know, loaves of bread with it and you wanted carbs, carbs, carbs. Right. And the recommendations out said that the protein needs were going down and the lipid hypothesis was king. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what drove it all. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the education system. Of course, that wasn't the main part of it because a a lot of that education goes towards your clinical knowledge of nutrition. Right. Um, But the bandwagon at that time was definitely um, that. That fat was bad. Yeah. Protein was a afterthought. Mm-hmm. That kills me. That, and I'm not surprised. I lived in that time period of don't make the meat the center of your food. Make mm-hmm. a pasta dish the center of your food. Mm-hmm. L-I-T-E came mm-hmm. out at that time. The yes. light option. Yes. You know? Yes. And sometimes they found out later that sometimes, I think you may have been the one to tell me this, that L-I-T-E meant that it had lemon in it. But that's why. light in color. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> light in, exactly. And then the whole no fat mm-hmm. campaign. Yes. Yes. And, and you can dive into that. What were they doing in order to make that? I mean, hold the, the, what drove snack wells and several of these others? Yes. And what I saw, what I would see is people would come into my office and they would say, I just need to know what I can eat all I want of. I want there to be a food that I can sit down and I can just eat all I want and I cannot feel bad about it. You were talking about this at the beginning, the magic bullet. Go yes. ahead, please. And let me also just throw this out there. Please. Nutrition encompasses a very wide field. Huge. Okay. Yeah. I've just seen a lot of this, and you and you, pro- you have probably too. People will say, well, you said such and such, but, you know, what if I have high blood pressure? Well, I wasn't talking specifically about high blood pressure. Right. When I talk to people, the first thing I need to know is what is your goal? Right. What right. are you trying to do? Right, right. And if you are trying to run farther, faster... I'm going to talk to you in a certain way. If you're trying to lose weight, I'm going to talk to you in a different way. Right, right, exactly. You can't always take something that somebody says and apply it across the board. Yeah, absolutely. So people would come in my office, and the other thing they would say is, um, last night I ate an entire box of snack wells. (laughs) (laughs) And so what, what is happening there is because snack wells had no fat. Right. Right. And at that time, if it had no fat. And it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it didn't have any fat. <laughs> exactly. But, well, how many calories did you eat? Yeah. Because it was not void of calories. Right. Definitely. Definitely. It was just void of fat. Right. 
And so the thought process was, well, if I can just eat no fat, yeah, then I can eat as much as I want. Right. And I think that's where we, for some reason, because again, we're, we, we tend to go in extremes. Very much so. Right. Yeah. That's why the moderation thing, but nobody likes right. to talk about moderation because no. they, they want to be able to, that follows in with the magic bullet. I mm-hmm. want there to be one thing I can do. Right. And it's going to work. And when it fixes this, then it's going to fix everything in my life. Right? And it'll be fixed forever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I can do it one time. Right. And it's fixed. And we know that. That that it, we we are looking for what we can do over a over a lifetime. Well, but, but lifestyle change. It's interesting when you were talking to me about you know how many people sitting down in front of you wanting that magic bullet. We have the same thing in exercise. What is the exercise? I never forget a, a, it was a physician. As a matter of fact, I had a conversation with, and he looked at my facility and he goes, "What's what's the one machine that does everything? What's the one exercise?" Because he was going to buy it for his house. Oh, and well, there you go. In his mind, it was one move, one machine, one move. That's it. You know, and you tell me I have to do that, do that for three sets and I'm done. That's what, and it, it killed me. And of course, his recommendation was going to be for his wife and for his kids and whatever, just like you're saying, you yeah. know, it's the, it's the magic bullet. And this one works for all. Right. Our approach to fitness is the same way. It's not only does it have to work for your body, it has to work for your head. Yes. You know, you've, you've got to understand it. And I would see that nutrition is the same way. This is a conversation you and I had a long time ago, and that is about how many people walk in and say, write me a diet. Tell me what to eat and I'll, I'll eat that. And your approach to that. People want a, want a written out diet. And again, because that appears to be a magic bullet. Bullet, yeah. The yes. answer. So I can give you a written out diet. Right. But do you want to follow that? I'm not going to give you 365 days worth of written out diets. Right. I don't have time for that. And you're, yeah, and, 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 you're, and you're speaking about what goes on in your life during that 365 days. Right. Got to write one for Christmas Day. Right, exactly. And when you exactly. go vi- visit your aunt in Chicago, I got to write one for that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's say you get one that has a two-week rotation. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. A 1,800 calorie diet that is 14 days. Okay. Yeah. And so you follow that 14 days. And you're able to do it for three or four cycles. Sure. Maybe a sure. month. Yeah. Something like that. You just, you're not going to do it forever. No. You're just not. No. Nobody is. No. So let's say that you do it for X amount of time and you accomplish your goal, whatever that goal was, right. whether it was weight loss or like I said, distance running, whatever. Sure. And usually short that, term on those kind of things. Yes. Yeah. So you accomplish that goal. Then what? Goal is accomplished but now you're at a crossroads. Well, now do I have to continue eating like that? Because exactly. now I'm kind of tired of it. Right. And honestly, I didn't really like it. Yeah. <laughs> I did it because you said, you know, because that's what I wanted to do. And right. you, you said I would lose weight if I did that for, you know, like I said, four weeks sure. or whatever. What we want you to do is learn how to eat, learn how to exercise, and learn how to be a healthier you. That's the same thing we have in exercise. And when I talk to people about nutrition, how many people I say, I had a client one time say, listen, I'm a good student. Just tell me. And this, and he was, he, he, he read everything, mm-hmm. still does. But after studying it for a very bright individual, after studying it for 25 to 30 years with some health issues in his family, so he's very attuned to this, he was sitting in front of me going, I still don't know what to eat. <laughs> well, maybe it's not the type of food that's the, the concern, but, but he was asking the same thing to me was just write it down and I'll do it. No, because what you're talking about is you want to adjust your entire lifestyle to this pattern. So basically this is going to dictate everything, your job, your time with your family, mm-hmm. where you go, what you do, whatever is going to be dictated by this, what I write down for you. And what we're talking about is making that lifestyle change. But let's back up a little bit. Okay, that sounds complicated. Actually, it's very simple. As a dietitian, what should we first and foremost be focused on? I mean, you can get all the way down to riboflavin if you want to. But, you know, day one, what should I be considered? What are the things that I should be concerned with? A, let's look at what your goals are. Right. And that's going to dictate what your concerns are. Sure. And let's just say that it's weight loss. Okay. Okay. Let's Take just, it for there. Let's right. just say that. 72% of the folks come to us for that. So, yeah. Yes. Let's okay. say that. Okay. If your goal is weight loss, then the first thing that... I think you should look at is how am I eating right now? Right. How have I been eating for the last five years? Right. Let's even say I like to look at trends. Sure. I like to look at um, and and I would ask somebody, okay, you know, what what'd you weigh in high school? And when do you think that you started gaining weight? And then I'd look at your weight now. And so I'm going to see a trend. Okay. okay. 
So then again, I'm going to say, okay, well, yeah, let, let's look at let's look at how you eat, and I'm going to throw out all that. Lo- I need to eat low fat because I have this condition. I need to eat low salt be- because I have this condition. We're right. going to say you don't have any conditions. Yeah, we're going to stick okay? with that for now. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. for now. You exactly. don't have any conditions. I love to use this as an example. I had a woman one time, and she didn't really have that much weight to lose, but she wanted to lose like 15 pounds. And I said, okay, well, let's look at it. She was a young girl, felt like she had kind of gained weight all of a sudden. Right. And so the biggest thing that stood out to me about her diet was how much Coke she drank, how much soda she drank. Right, right, exactly, okay? yeah. And so we, we looked at that, and we looked at all the other things she ate. Right. And the most glaring thing to me, that she could change the easiest. Right, exactly. Simplest change, easy to adopt to that lifestyle. Yes, yeah. Was the Coke. Right. And so she looked at me a little bit like I had three eyes, and yeah. I said, okay, for two weeks, we need to find an alternative. Right. Okay. Okay. You know, obviously you need to be drinking more water. Right. Uh, let's throw some, you know, diet Coke in there if you have to have it. Right. Yeah. But let's let's come up with some other alternatives. And she dropped weight all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. because I'm going to look for the simplest thing I can do. Absolutely. That works into your lifestyle. Period. Look at what we're saying there, because I'm, I'm thinking too many people will hear that and think, ah, there it goes. There's the bad food. Right, you found the Coke. bad food and you t- took it out. No, what she was doing is looking at, I love that. You're looking at, what are you doing right now? Because it's so much easier. It's the same thing we do in fitness. You know, people come in and tell me they're, they, they're walking, you know, four or five days a week and uh, they're not developing knee problems or whatever, but they're coming here for make some changes. But I love my walk. I get up in the morning, I walk, and a lot of people walk for their head more than they do for the body. Yes. The last thing I'm going to do is change that. Right. You know, why fix what's not broken? Right. You know, when we're doing no resistance training, okay, let's add that. It's the simple change to the lifestyle. And looking at, in that example you were giving, it's a glaring simple change. Right. Was let's just cut back on this. Cut back. You know, you know, don't even stop it. Maybe, but but cut back on it. And the dramatic change you can make by making that one simple change versus, let me write you an entire yes. piece of paper that you That's have right. to live by for the rest of your life. That's right. Yeah. So she just ate. Right. She didn't even change what she ate. Right. Exactly. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> to me, the approach is let me into your life just a little bit and let's look at what you can accomplish. Sure. What you think that you can accomplish easily. Right. You know, again, that's it. And if you if you eat lunch out every day right. and that is easiest because of your job situation, sure. well, let's not change that. So are you, wait a you second know, now. Are you telling me you can actually something. go to a restaurant and, and still? Yeah. Yes. Imagine let's that. pick something else that's easy. Let's don't pick the hardest thing for you to do. Right. Let's pick something that you'll go, oh, okay, well, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, exactly. That I can do. And then... You have accomplished something. Right. We all feel good yeah. <laughs> after we have accomplished something. Yeah, period. Right? Period. Period. So you have accomplished something. You've made a step in the right direction. Right. And it wasn't crazy hard. Yeah, exactly. It exactly. wasn't crazy hard. That slight change. Of course, we started with the, the whole premise of we could be here for hours, but whole premise of, you know, the live food and our approach to that. But you said something we were discussing this prior to, and that is enjoying food. You know, getting back to that. Yes. You know, it, and food's not the enemy. Never has been the enemy. Yes. And so we need that to live. And so uh, it, and if we, if I let this go on, we, you and I will be here for hours because we can, I mean, I monopolize a lot of your workouts <laughs> doing this. So so I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, we are going to, I'm going to put you on the camera on this one. So I'm hoping that we, you and I can at least do this once a month and have something on there and help dispel the myths about nutrition with the professional that knows what she's talking about, that's for sure. So can you agree to that? Absolutely. I got witnesses. So Looking forward to it. <laughs> Tanya, thank you so much for being on the first segment of this. And we look forward to having this at least, like I say, once a month. But if you have any questions dealing with nutrition, please feel free to reach out to us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's my email address. Personal Edge Fitness website, Facebook page. Hit me up on X at Team PE. And you're more than glad to ask. If you have a question for Tanya, be glad to ask through those channels. We will be more than glad to address them. We already have some as it it is. Again, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Attacking your wellness in every way we possibly can, especially, not just fitness, but especially when it comes to nutrition, is just one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. 
Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.